Hey, buddy. Oh, I shouldn't say that because people don't know who you are like, like that, you know. Well, uh, I guess Professor Conyers. I want to say Professor Conyers because, you know, I know you're a doctor and all the rest of that stuff. But a professor is someone who actually teaches. Now, you teach. Now, you've been teaching for a long time. And you have what we call standards. Right. <laughs> now, you told me something the other day. I even got upset. Do you want to relate what you said? And I want to ask you about academia in general. But just, just well, if you can refresh my memory on what I did well, say. Well, the thing is, you you had a student. Now, now you interestingly enough, this is so weird, because you know I teach also some you know some whatever. When I start, when I, even when I, before I started teaching, I call I tell people I tell people you can call me um, brother Sloan, brother Anthony. You can even say like the kids say Mr. Anthony. But you can never say Mr. Sloan, because Mr. Sloan is my older brother's daddy's name. Mm -hmm. But the reason I say brothers because I realized in growing up, I, um, what, ha what, what happens is you learn more from your siblings than you did, or respect, or whatever, or you're m more connected than, them, than your parents, your preachers, wow. whatever have you. So for me, if I try to be above everybody, if I say I'm your, you know, your, teacher, your professor, daddy, whatever wow. have you, to me it's just, I don't know, it, it, it strikes me uh, different. But you do the same thing. Maybe it's just because, you know, we both grew up in the same environment. I don't know, but why do you, why do you call you, why do you insist, not insist, but why do you say, what do, you, what, what do people call you in, in class? Well, you know, I, I'm not someone who's traditionally degree-oriented uh, in, in that sense. Uh, to me, degrees are a dime a dozen, although I recommend that all of the students get their degrees because they live in a society that's materialistic, that's degree oriented, and you need to have a degree to show your expertise or show that you've gone through an educational process. Mm -hmm. However, in my classroom, which is more or less a freewheeling classroom, you know, I don't mind if students do not call me doctor or professor. In actuality, I prefer that they call me Brother James. And, and uh, by doing that, we develop a relationship of respect, of rapport, and we're down to earth. So what I'm dealing with in the classroom are subjects that are really relevant and down to earth for African people. So I do not emphasize doctor or professor or anything uh, like that. I prefer that we have this one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationship of African people. I mean, when we came over here on slave ships, there were no doctors or professors on those slave ships. We were just African people. And I prefer for us to be in the classroom just African people. But within that, there still is a level of respect. For instance, in my classroom, even though you can call me Brother James, you can call me James, you can call me Professor Conyers, Dr. Conyers, I do not allow anybody to come into the classroom and then simply use street jargon to address me or address anybody else. Well, that's what I'm talking Something happened there. You, <coughs> yeah. they, they don't know you come from the streets, but go ahead. What happened? E e exactly. We still have to have a modicum of respect for one another, and this is a part of the lessons that I try to teach in class, and it's very down to earth. It reminds me of some of the things that Malcolm did. When Malcolm spoke to us as a people, he went right to the grassroots, and when he said things, we understood it the first time, because he hit home on things that we would all understand. Well, I try to do the same thing in the classroom. I try to bring about a, le a level of respect between us as African people that we all must understand. And part of that is not to address one another with street language. For instance, uh, just the other day, someone came into my classroom and we had a discussion and um, the person in the class called me boss. Well, that's not happening in my class. No one gets to call me boss. To me, boss, that... Boss, boss, B-O-S-S? B-O-S-S. Wait a second, wait a second. You, you know, I live in South Africa. Right. And when I hear boss, I get upset. It's a different I, context. I, yeah, yeah, but here's the interesting thing. Zombie is right next door. Right. And I go to Zombie and I have boss that doesn't bother me. Right. It, 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 you know? And I also know it comes from the Dutch, uh, that they, back in New, when it was New right. York was New Amsterdam, there was a show, some, some right. sort of respect. But what, what, what's, what's happening with this boss thing? Well, I take it as a, as a form of slight a person and especially when you say something to a student that they may have some fundamental problems with deep down inside things that they don't want to face explicitly that are true and to save face quite often they'll use a terminology in order to impress other people in the class it's very much the same thing as people as many of the young brothers wearing their pants below their behinds as I tell people anybody who would be impressed by that type of behavior doesn't count and those who count are not impressed and so when someone comes into my class and does that, to me, I take that as a sign of disrespect after I have already established how you are to address me. I address them with respect, 
as number one, uh, respect of, of, for being a human being, but also the respect of being a student, being an intelligent person, and I would never address them outside of their names or outside of any way that they wanted me to address them. But in my classroom, you don't come into my classroom and say, use words like chief, hey, how you doing chief, or how you doing boss, okay, as a sound of respect, because I take that as a slight. But in the context that this person did it, this person was doing it in an attempt to save face because they had said something that was very silly and I addressed that in the classroom, not in a way that would put the person down, but address it in terms of an educational uh, lesson for everybody in the classroom. But they felt, uh, as, a result of, as a result of my saying that, they did, needed to say something that would allow them to save face. And one of the ways that you do that to put somebody else down is to call them outside of their name. So he said, boss. And the way he said it forced me to address that in the classroom. Hmm. You don't get to do that in my classroom. Hmm. All right? You don't get to come into my classroom, use the term boss, use the term chief. You don't come into my classroom and use the N-word. I address all of those things. In my classroom, uh, before I can even get to the lessons, uh, I would say in the first four weeks of the semester, which is normally a 16-week semester, before I even get to what we have to talk about, the history or the culture or anything like that, I have to go through a period of or orientation because by the time we get them, they have been miseducated. Mm -hmm. They have been <coughs> culturally misoriented and to the degree. Some people would say education nothing but indoctrination. Exactly. Yeah. Any word that you want to use like that. But they, they've been culturally uh, miseducated. They've been historically miseducated. They've been culturally and historically uh, misoriented. So by the time I get them, in order to make the history that we're talking about mean something so it's just not names dates and places because many people will take a history course depending on who the professor is and all they're going to do is give you history and it becomes names dates and places it goes through one year and come out the other and at the end of that semester or the end of that course the person virtually is in the same place that they were when they came into the course now i'm not saying every single person some people will uh, grasp the information and move with it. But by and large, it's nothing that transforms them. A history course taught by African-centered people should be a course that transforms the student. Well, one of the only ways that, in my opinion, that you can transform a student is when you go through this orientation so that people begin to understand why our history is important, why we need to understand it, and you have to get rid of a whole lot of misorientation. And part of that misorientation is, is talking about, you know, why we use the N-word, why do we say that? We have to ground people in an understanding, an African-centered understanding of what the course is going to be like before we even get to, get to the course material. Now, other professors might disagree with that. This is my method and technique, and I find that it works very, very well. And I find that by the end of the semester, you will have said things, whether people agree with them or disagree with them, because part of education is not just hearing things that you like that make you feel good, it's hearing things that challenge you, that don't make you feel good. That's what an education is. And when I say those things that make people feel uncomfortable because of their cultural misorientation that they bring to the class, let's just face it, most of our people have been, what, Eurocentrically educated. Mm -hmm. So by the time they get to the class, they're bringing baggage with them. And so when I disrupt that baggage, when I dispel the mythology that they have, uh, it's very, very important. So, if we're going to make the course mean something, the course has to have a certain type of dialogue, a certain type of methodology that transforms the student. Granted, we will not transform all of them, but I can assure you, in my experience, you will get to a whole lot of them, and because you have said something that challenged their thinking, they will never, ever forget you. I've had students that come back years later and say, you know, I challenge you about the N-word. I challenge you about whether or not Egypt was an African civilization. I challenge you about that. Years later, and come back and say, you know, I've had time to study, I've had time to think, and you were absolutely right about that. And I'm glad I took your course. Well, I hate to be, uh, I won't say Eurocentric about it, but just give me a percentage of you think of people who, who you think you've, who changed, who've come, uh, who've, who've gone through your courses, and you know, just have been changed, have been transformed. All right. Uh, I can't give you an actual percentage, but I can give you, I guess you might say, a guesstimate. Yes, based upon what students say at the end of the course, and based upon their body language and tone of voice, I believe it's genuine. What they are saying to me, because they say it in their own words from their own critical analysis, I would say, at least in most of my classes, I would say at least 80%. 
That's interesting. I, 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 I don't, I don't. I, well, I've been to your class, but I mean, I think that that would be correct because I've posted stuff uh, that I've interviewed you with. People have actually commented, "Yeah, you know, brother Connors." I, 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 so I, I understand what that means. Let me go back to this, 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 this boss man. So, so what happened? What was the upshot? How did you, what, what, was he dressed down? What was the class reaction? What was his reaction? What happened? Well, the class reaction, by and large, were they I, based upon body language. Uh, facial expressions, etc., all of which are body language. I believe that the class in and of itself was a little bit shocked that he had said that. And the reason for that is at the beginning of my course, I always define the parameters of the course. So everybody knows what to expect. All right? Everybody knows that when you come to my class, you don't lay your head on the table. All right? And, you know, or fall asleep. You don't do that in my class. And I address people on that. It's in the syllabus. I put everything in this. You don't do that in my class. Education is serious business and when you do things like that when you come to class and you fall asleep or you lay your head on the table and pretending that you're not sleeping or do any of those kinds of things i consider that number one disrespect to me as the facilitator of the course number two i consider that dis disrespect to the idea of education i consider that disrespect to themselves i consider it disrespect to the people who paved the way their ancestors upon whose shoulders they're standing to get to a classroom like that and so, all of that, to me, becomes an insult. They're not just disrespecting me. And I tell them, if you are too tired to come to class because you chose to be here, I did not choose for you to come to college. I did not choose for you to be in my class. You chose to be here or somebody else chose for you to be here. And based upon that, you need to carry yourself in a particular way, especially in a black studies course, because this is where you liberate your mind. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why I established these parameters that there are things you don't do in my class. If you are too tired to be here, I do not mind you getting up and going out and not coming back on that day. If you don't want to be in the class at all, I will help facilitate you not being in the class because we always get some Negroes in the class that no matter what you tell them, they disagree with. And so, but in my class, you are not going to disrespect the ancestors. You're not going to disrespect me. You're not going to disrespect your parents. And you're not going to disrespect the idea of education in and of itself and the importance of education for African people in terms of our long-term survival chances and for the liberation of our minds under conditions in which racism in the form of white supremacy affects our thought, speech, and action every day. Mm. All right, I, I, I'm going to stop there. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much.